What's going on guys? Today we have another special video for you. We are going to be talking about Google Alphabet stock. Basically what we're going to go into in this video is there's been a lot of discussion over layoffs. A lot of companies we have seen laid off a tremendous amount of people over the last couple of weeks and Alphabet is one of those that really hasn't jumped into that boat. So we're going to go over are they going to start going down that path? What have they done so far to basically start cutting costs? And then we're going to take a look at what what they probably need to do in the future to help their stock price, help the company as a whole uh, keep moving forward and stay in line with other companies like Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, everything like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. Let's start off by taking a look at Google's chart. So what we have here is over the last day down 1%, five days, they're actually up 2.45%. Last month, they're down 2.2%. Last six months, down over over 11% year to date down almost 33%. And then over the last year, they're actually down 34.58%. And I highlighted a couple things down here. So market cap, they were at one point close to $2 trillion. Right now they're sitting at $1.26 trillion. Their PE ratio is down below 20. So they're sitting at 19.97. They've been at around like a 30 to even like a 35 PE ratio in the past. But again, that was a whole different environment where interest rates were incredibly low and the company still had a lot of growth in front of it because it could borrow money at basically no money down and you know basically invest it back into the business. And then the 52 week high, we're sitting at 50, $151.55. So what's very interesting about this number is we're actually getting very close to basically where the market peaked last year. So we're basically kind of right in that range. You can see November 5th, November kind of through the 20th, somewhere in there is where the market really peaked out. So right now we're sitting at 52 weeks basically from this $151.55 mark. So we're down from basically the all-time highs is what you're seeing. And that's that 34 kind of percent number that you're seeing here. And then the all-time low or sorry, the 52-week low is $83.34. And that $83.34 was hit in the last couple of weeks. What we can see here is that basically the stock after earnings crashed incredibly. And then it's had a really abrupt, basically, march to the upside. And that's been on the back of a lot of inflation concerns starting to subside. We saw inflation fall more than what was expected uh, by the overall market. And that's obviously had a big impact as people kind of start to price in the potential of you know the Fed starting to pivot earlier than expected. This is the article that we're going to take a look at today, and it's titled, Investor Tells Google, Cut Costs Now and Stop Paying Staff So Much. A lot of the comments in this article are actually coming from a TCI fund management. So they actually own $6 billion of Alphabet stock in their portfolio. And basically what they're doing is they're looking at the company right now, and primarily they're looking at it from an investor standpoint. What is it going to take for basically Google's stock to get back to all-time highs? And what they're doing is basically looking at Google's cost cut where it's inefficient, where it's being efficient, and where it has room to you know, make different adjustments to potentially help grow the stock price. So that's what we're going to be getting into here in this article. I want to start off by taking a look at these first two sections. So I'll start off just by reading them and then I'll give my opinion on them. So what we have here is you've publicly stated that Google should be 20% more efficient. We could not agree more. Nearly all technology companies are reducing costs, the hedge fund added. So again, this is that TCI hedge fund, basically speaking. TCI highlights 11,000 job losses at Meta announced last week, and then layoffs at Amazon of 10,000 people and actions taken by Microsoft, Salesforce, Stripe, and Twitter. Twitter being a very big one, that one's been all over the news, obviously with a lot of the drama with Elon Musk. Twitter's made you know a lot of headlines over the last couple of weeks, and a lot of the staff is either getting laid off or even quitting. So that's a very interesting scenario. Uh, and then also you have Amazon. That's a lot of corporate kind of salary uh, positions that are actually getting reduced there. So they have 10,000 positions. This isn't like their warehouse workers primarily right now. They're kind of focusing on a lot of those higher paid uh, salary 
positions and then you have eleven thousand at meta so again that was big news i liked at least how meta kind of went about it because it's never good you know having layoffs and talking about it but mark zuckerberg i watched a little bit of his video kind of you know explaining to a lot of the people who were laid off and even the employees that were you know being kept around explaining you know that he's sorry that he apologizes for you know the mistake that they shouldn't have hired as many people over the last couple of years and that's really what a lot of these companies are running into so we can see here that alphabet's headcount was more than doubled has more than doubled since 2017 with more than 50,000 hired since the pandemic beginning and 37 of those 37,000 of those in the last 12 months alone so this is absolutely insane what we're seeing here again a lot of growth in terms of the headcount of these big tech companies over the last few years so again in my opinion meta kind of went about it right you know they were apologetic they kind of took the focus and basically ran with it when they announced the layoffs they immediately gave a statement as to you know why it was happening and what was going on with it i think google could start going down that route i think they're you know falling a little bit later to the game but honestly that's not a terrible thing because they were kind of on the front end in terms of cost cutting so they had a meeting a while back where basically they talked to all their employees it was like an all hands on deck meeting where they discussed you know cost cutting measures that were going to take place over the next few months um, and basically a lot of investor or employees were very upset because they were looking at the last couple earnings calls and saying hey we've been you know killing it we've been announcing growth on our earnings we've been having you know incredible numbers but why are we seeing these redu reductions in you know parties gifts just little things throughout the company and basically now a lot of those employees google employees are seeing these other big tech companies and seeing that they're all reducing you know getting laid off people losing their jobs and i think a lot of these google you know employees are now saying hey I would much rather have less parties, less food in the office, less, you know, little knickknacks here and there and still have a job than be like these other, you know, 21,000 employees who have just been laid off between Meta and Amazon. So hopefully, you know, there's some focus there and renewed focus and hopefully alphabet won't have to cut jobs but from the same instance i don't think it would be a terrible thing what we can see here in this quote and it's reiterated later in the article median compensation at alphabet was 67 percent higher than that at microsoft and 152 percent higher than the 20 largest listed tech companies in the u.s there is no justification for this enormous disparity. So that last comment is obviously from TCI. But honestly, when you're looking at that, why would Alphabet be paying almost 70% more to its employees than Microsoft, right? A lot of those companies, they have a lot of competition between the two. Why is Microsoft, you know, paying more? Granted, I do believe Microsoft has a lot more employees. So that probably accounts for, you know, a lot more, you know, admin assistance, things like that. So there could be a little bit of disparity there where Alphabet may be primarily focused on hiring, you know, only engineers and computer engineers and programmers and things like that. So that could account for a little bit of that. But still, the range of this 70 percent number that is absolutely massive and that is a number that should be brought down you know more in line with the rest of the industry to keep them more competitive uh in terms of their overall margin what's very interesting on top of that is google is some of the highest salaries in silicon valley so their average compensation last year was two hundred and ninety five thousand dollars, which is absolutely insane i know a lot of these programmers and engineers basically you know have salaries in that range especially at big tech companies but that is even higher than a lot of the numbers i've seen i actually am an engineer i majored in engineering not computer science or anything like that uh actually chemical engineering and really it's nowhere I've, I've never seen numbers you know this high and again this is the average so that means there's employees that are making way more than this there's employees that are making less than this but two hundred ninety-five thousand is just an absolutely insane number especially when you consider that they've added thirty-seven thousand employees over the last 12 months 
months alone. So that's absolutely insane. And it's hard to justify and say that all 37,000 of these employees are top performers, right? The job market over the last year has been absolutely crazy. I've personally switched jobs uh, just because of how insane the market has been. And it's just crazy to think about, you know, that they've added 37,000 employees and how many of those are actually top performers, how many of those are, you know, in the bottom 10% and could potentially be laid off. You know, there is a good way of going about it. If you're laying off people who are underperforming and basically bringing the rest of the team down, oftentimes the, the rest of the team will kind of look at that as being a positive because they won't have to make up for other people, you know, basically not performing on their team. And they don't, it's never good for morale to see people, you know, there might be people who are working from home all the time and they're just not there to contribute to the rest of the team. You don't see them, you know, participating in a lot of the groups and contributions in, you know, a lot of the programming and whatnot that is going on. And that can obviously hurt morale. So there is a, a good way to go about cost cutting. And I think Google has kind of gone about it in the right way. They've taken a lot of measures at the start right now that have been, again, cost cutting in terms of parties and reducing, you know, just little things like that. And then honestly, if they get to a point where they start laying off people, I have a lot of faith in their CEO and, and him taking the right approach, you know, to just treat people right and, and basically do the right thing. It's always difficult to jump from that topic to the next topic that we have here, and that is buybacks of the stock. So obviously it's a little bit difficult because when you're talking about people's livelihoods and their jobs, and then you're turning around and also saying that you should be buying back shares of your company, it's kind of like, why aren't you just keeping those people on board? and reducing your buyback. So there is a certain amount of, you know, keeping people on as a team, but also from the instance like I got into already is there are underperformers at your company and it overall hurts morale to keep those people around. So personally, I think Google, if they're cu cutting costs in terms of reducing their bottom 10% of employees, I don't think that's a terrible thing. I think that can basically help the company grow, help the company refocus and, and move into the future. And then along with that, if they add buybacks in because the stock price is down, you know, 30, 34 uh, percent over the last year, that can be a huge contributor to basically growing their EPS. And they don't really have a lot of margin for, you know, mergers and acquisitions and, and growing through that um, that method. So it really comes down to, you know, buying back their own stock, increasing their earnings per share, and, you know, overall helping to bring up their stock price along with that. So just to reiterate, in my opinion, I think Google has gone about this in the right way. They've taken the steps to cut smaller costs at first. They had the meetings with employees. They kind of informed them that, hey, we need to focus a lot more on getting back to growth, entrepreneurial spirit. We need to reduce our overhead and, and put in more time and effort. They slow hiring. They've basically taken all the right steps. And then at the same time, they've also let a lot of these other big tech companies take the lead and, you know, lay off people at first. So now if they just kind of follow suit, it's really, you know, it's not completely their fault. You know, they're seeing the rest of the industry, industry do this. They have to stay competitive. So it's more understood, I feel like, from employees. Again, it's never a positive thing, never fun to talk about all this. But, you know, in my opinion, I wouldn't be, you know, worried if I see Google start cutting a little bit of their staff because, I mean, 37,000 employees over the last 12 months, that's an absolutely insane number. And there's no way you could say again that all of those employees are 100%, you know, worth it to the business and worth the $295,000 salary that you're potentially paying them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day.